Hello folks, welcome back to the channel and indeed my first impressions of the Quest 3. So if you're new here, pull up a chair, feel free to subscribe and we'll get straight into this video. And I must say, um, overall it's been a bit of a mixed bag for me. I do feel that some YouTubers out there have overhyped this headset slightly. <laughs> um, but I mean I'm going to focus on PC VR of course, being flight simulation. I'd imagine most of you watching this are interested in seeing how this performs in MSFS. Now I will say if you're thinking of buying a Quest 3, I would urge you very strongly to buy a virtual desktop. I am using AirLink at the moment just to do this recording, but you know, in comparison, um, there's a huge difference in quality, especially you've got a lot more options available to you. Uh, I used godlike mode for my 4090. And I must say, with the new features that are available for the Quest 3 in Virtual Desktop, there was minimal artifacting and it looked very, very nice. You know, overall, a very impressive display. Now, I appreciate I do use high-end headsets such as the Vari Air and Big Screen Beyond and Pyramid's Crystal. So, for the past couple of days, I have been using the Pico 4 and Quest 2 just to gauge where things are you know, and I must admit I've had a great time with those headsets in MSFS. And going to the Quest 3, I was expecting, well, a bit more than what I've experienced so far. Especially when compared to the Pico 4, which to be honest has a sharper display than this. I mean, that's probably obvious, the resolution is a bit more, but not by a massive amount. But it does, you know, seem a little bit sharper to me in virtual desktop. However, I do feel the Quest 3 has better colours and better lenses. Now, this is the big deal here for Meta, and that is the pancake lenses in this are quite simply stunning. They are right up there, even with the Vari Aero and Pimax Crystal in terms of edge to edge clarity. Fantastic. Um, however, don't confuse that with image quality, okay? Um, the Crystal Aero Beyond, of course, they're in a completely different league, and if you want high quality PC VR, you know, experience, especially in a flight sim, those are the headsets you should go for. But for this price segment for £500, and thinking of where this sits in terms of the Pico 4 and the Quest, you know, I think this is the better headset, but not by a massive amount. And in fact, if you do own a Pico 4, unless you want that better colour pass through, and mixed reality capabilities and the you know quicker chipset for gaming there is no reason to upgrade to the quest 3 you know i don't think anyway um this reminds me very much of the pico 4 which surprised me again because i was expecting a little bit more in terms of the image quality in this um i can see screen door effect as well which is a lot less obvious in the pico 4 but i think Part of that is the fact that Meta have canted the displays in order to get a better field of view. And by the way, the field of view in this is way better than the Pico 4. It's very, very good. Um, I would say this is easily about 105 uh, degrees field of view horizontal, which is pretty much as good, if not better, than the Crystal. Very, very well done there. But because of that canted display sort of setup, it means that the screen door effect well, the pixels are kind of at like an angle, so I can see them pointing like diagonally, which is it creates a bit of a pattern in the sky. To be fair, I am being very picky about that, but uh, you know, that's what this channel's all about, really, is telling you everything. And I think it's not a massive deal breaker, but it is there, and you know, please be aware of it. There is screen door effect, and that's something I do struggle with because that was the one thing that I was so pleased to get rid of when the uh, Reva G1 was first released and I swore I'd never go back to screen door effect but here I am looking at it right now although say it's not terrible it is there now funny enough this is my second Quest 3 <laughs> because I did order a 512 gigabyte version from Meta however they did say it was going to be severely delayed so I bought another one from Amazon but they both ended up turning up today so I thought, well, at least I can compare them. And the 512 gigabyte version had pretty bad Miura. I also noticed 
um, a bit of distortion with the lenses, which really surprised me. In the centre, if I sort of move left and right, I can see a slight warping of the text. Um, and it, that one also had a dead pixel, by the way, so that's going back. So I'm not sure whether that was just a dodgy unit. The 128 gigabyte version I'm using today, and that's the one I'd recommend for those who are just using it for PC VR. Well, this display looks much better. The Miura is minimal and there's no distortion. So there seems to be a little bit of um, inconsistency there with whatever manufacturer they're using for their panels. That's worth noting and you know keeping in mind for when you get your headset. In fact, I would recommend just looking at a plain white background and checking the display for dead pixels first because if you notice one say you know a month down the road you might not be able to return it so overall you know unlike a lot of youtubers who were absolutely over hyping this if i'm honest i'm a little bit underwhelmed by the quest 3 for me you know this headset is going to excel for gaming and that's kind of why i've got one not really for flight simming um, but to recommend it as a PC VR headset, it's a bit tricky because really, if you've got a Reva G2, you're going to get a better display clarity still. These are my honest first impressions, folks, and uh, I'm hoping that I'm able to tweak it. I will say as well that the facial interface is god awful. It's really harsh. It reminds me of the Pico 4 interface, actually. It's not very nice. I would recommend, if you are looking at getting a Quest 3, to check out VR Cover. They have just released a cloth cover, which actually has a bit of a cushion to it as well. It feels very nice. And uh, I have a 10% discount code as well. So I would recommend checking VR Cover out. They have got a lot of accessories coming, but for now, sort of an interim gap. If you are finding the Quest 3 interface a little bit, you know, harsh, I would recommend getting a cloth cover because it does definitely help the comfort factor. <laughs> I will say that the inbuilt speakers are very nice. I'm using my headphones today simply because the microphone isn't working quite right with AirLink. Um, but the inbuilt speakers on this are very good. What else? Um, I just think, generally speaking, folks, you know, as a gaming headset with that XR2 chipset, you know, with the Gen 2, it's superb it really is an amazing standalone vr headset and i have been messing around with the sort of mixed reality games and stuff and it did blow me away without a doubt it could be worth your money if you're coming from a quest 2 but if you've got a pico 4 i would not bother unless you really want that mixed reality capability and if you've got a reva g2 if you're happy with it i don't think it's a good idea upgrading either which is a shame because we desperately need a mid price point PC VR headset. However, I do feel if you've got a 4090 graphics card or a 40 series card in general, they do encoding much better. So get yourself virtual desktop, run it on godlike mode. It does look really, really nice. So sorry folks that I'm not really that excited by this headset. And trust me, it's not because I'm used to the high end stuff. I have been using the Pico 4 and Quest 2 for a couple of days now to give myself a good sort of transition time because I have been using the big screen beyond quite a bit. There's people in the comments of some of my videos asking me, you know, can you compare the Quest 3 to the Beyond or the Crystal? It's completely pointless, folks. This is a completely different uh, price segment. If you really want the best PC VR experience, it really is the Crystal, the Aero and the Beyond. However, for those upgrading from a Quest 2, I think you'll love the pancake lenses. I definitely think you'll really enjoy that. Um, but overall, there is screen door effect, there is mirror. I was hoping for a bit of a sharper display. However, I do feel a virtual desktop is the saviour for this headset, and it definitely will help the PC VR crowd, without a doubt. In fact, I have noticed with the latest update with virtual desktop that there's minimal artifacting as well, so that's great. So folks, as I say, this is just a rough and ready video. I did have quite a bit of trouble getting this headset paired, um, I had to use Melissa's phone because mine was, wouldn't have it at all and I couldn't use the headset until my phone recognised it. I hate stuff like that, you know, I, I just wish I could just switch it on and get going, you know. So there is still that kind of mobile app you need, which is a bit of a pain. So please let me know in the comments if you'd like me to test anything. I will be doing a full flight in the Black Square TBM850 very soon in the Quest 3. 
I'll probably do a bit of DCS as well. But uh, for now, that will do for a quick sort of raw first impressions. A little bit lukewarm, but overall, you know, um, I'm just glad that there is a new headset out there in the mid sort of price point. I just wish it had a display port. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I truly appreciate it. And I'll see you again very soon. Take care and bye for now.